Reminder to kitchen and dish house and waiter people, whoever's taking out trash from Stillman, you got to go all the way to the dumpsters. Somebody last night decided just to stick uh, their, their kitchen trash in the garbage can here and it was full of meat wrappers and of course uh, the dogs found it and there was a mess this morning. Physics students, make sure that you take care of your slinky responsibilities today. We are surrounded by our ancestors. Every student that attended Midland for one year, whether they graduated or not, are hanging on the walls. And when a new student enters the chapel for the first time, and they wonder, do they belong? Do they have friends? They've only been in school a few days, wondering what their time is going to be like. There's a reassurance uh, that the space holds, that you can do this. For some reason, you found us and we found you. And we're all together, 90 to 100 with the faculty, sitting in this place, surrounded by every name of every student that went here. Behind every one of those names, there's a life story that leads back here. In 1952 was when my mother uh, drove me up to Midland to look at the school. Paul Squibb uh, was being told by my mother that I was had all kinds of learning disabilities and that also uh, I had these habits that bothered her a great deal. I liked to walk out our front door and, and hitchhike. Um, and kind of the more she was uh, describing my faults, uh, the more Paul found the stories uh, interesting. And in any case, I went to Midland in my eighth grade. Uh, but also while I was at Midland, I had read an article by Aldous Huxley um, in my civics class in 1955 on population. And that really resonated with me, and I immediately became a member of the Population Reference Bureau. I mean, at the time, there wasn't any courses in family planning within the schools of public health. There was nothing on how you actually solve the population problem. How do you, one, help uh, women and men? How do you help them prevent an unwanted pregnancy? How do you have every pregnancy wanted? How do you have every birth wanted? For the last 47 years, I've been advising governments in developing countries on how to prevent unwanted pregnancies and creating the health, education, economic, and social framework for the two-child family. Beginning in Egypt in 1960, I have worked and lived in Taiwan, Turkey, Iran, Bangladesh, India, and Indonesia. I founded Population Communication in 1977. My passion is in using my skills as a scientist, entrepreneur, and public health professional in saving women and children's lives and addressing the problem of exponential population growth. When I was born, there was just about 2 billion people on the planet and now we're at 6.7 billion and we're headed towards 9 billion. India adds 1,500,000 new people every month. China, with the one-child policy, still adds every month 525,000 new people. In Sub-Saharan Africa, every population since independence has increased four times, except for those populations have increased five times. So with half the population below 15, they would have to have a one-child family for the next 30 years just to stay where they are. And in some of those countries, they say they want six children. So where do you get the wanting of six children down to the wanting and having of two children? That's uh, very stressful, but it doesn't mean uh, you spend any less time uh, taking every ounce of your energy to, to make a difference. I've had an ongoing relationship with India for years. 
In the early 1980s, the late Indian Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi came to the United Nations and there presented a document I had written in support of population stabilization. Today, some 75 heads of governments have signed that statement. My challenge is to convert the statement on population stabilization into policies and programs that ultimately achieve replacement-sized families. Despite appearances, dedicated leadership is having a profound impact across much of India. Health workers are deeply motivated, and couples are now having about three kids, half the number Indian parents used to have. And uh, the challenge then is how do you break through barriers that have prevented access to health services to keep uh, children alive? Because the one fundamental aspect of, uh, of solving uh, uh, the population explosion is literally um, the process by which the child and the mother have an opportunity to survive. And that means primary health services. That means uh, clean water. So the children don't die. The age of marriage has increased, the spacing opportunities are there, and the third child then becomes an irrational choice. And once you've done that, then you've broken the back on what it takes to, make, to solve the population explosion. Well, my own two children, Tommy and uh, Kate, have uh, given me uh, heaven on earth, and you want that for every other parent who chooses to have uh, children, and you want them to be able to have those children when they're wanted and can be given the same opportunities and privileges my children have been given.